In this clip, we'll merge two data sets and then calculate correlation between these two and plot them together on a graph to evaluate how closely they move together. The two data sets we have here are the monthly temperature anom anomalies in the Northern Hemisphere and CO2 concentration data, which are also monthly and these are uh, global CO2 concentration data. So <clears throat> here in the spreadsheet, I'll create a new worksheet in which I want to merge the data. First, I'll start copying the monthly data. We will also have to adjust the periods. So here are the data. This is just a month number. All I want to keep here is the uh, uh, year, the month. I don't want to keep this column. And this is the temperature anomaly. Now, for, for a particular reason where these data come from, they come from a lookup function of another table. If I deleted just this column, actually all these temperature anomaly data disappear because in the VLOOKUP function these, um, uh, inform this information is used. So I press control set to undo and before I do anything else I will copy this entire table and paste values so the formula disappear. And it's important we do the entire table because there are more formula down here. It's all uh, a function of how these, this table was created. So it's easiest to highlight the entire table. Control C for copy. And then we go to paste, paste values. And now all the formula have disappeared. And now I can delete this column without any trouble. So that was the first step. Let's have a look at the CO2 data, which are here in another spreadsheet and where I printed some uh, time series plots with the CO2 data. The data I'm particularly interested in is, is the trend data. So that's the data without the seasonal pattern. The first observation here is actually March 1958. So before I do anything else, let's go back to our new spreadsheet where we want to merge the data. And I shall actually delete all the information before March 1958. So I'll delete everything up to February 1958. So, okay, now I can bring the data across. I want to make sure that the dates fit and that there's no missing information. So for this reason, what I'll actually do is I highlight all these columns up to the trend. Then I press shift and hold it press enter and then the down arrow and everything is copied. I control C for copy. I'll go to my new spreadsheet and go to the top left cell where I want the data and press control V to paste. So here are my data. So uh, March 58, that all fits very nicely. Let's go to the bottom of the table by just pressing end and then down arrow. And I can see the last observation is September 17, and it's the same for both uh, sources. I actually don't need these three rows. We don't have data anyway. So, so that's all good. That means now I can actually delete the duplicate date information, and I did everything. It was just the last column which had the trend data. So I delete everything here. And this was the uh, CO2. Let's call it trend. So now I have my data. Let's first plot them, highlight both columns. Uh, we go to insert charts, we go to line graph, or just use a standard line graph. And the first thing you can see is that really, we can only see the CO2 trend, but the data live on extremely different scales. 
Okay, remember temperature and nano, uh, anomalies, they're just around, you know, zero, just between zero and two, basically. So the CO2 trend basically dwarfs these data. We can also see that since we had a longer data series before, the graph still, the Excel still recognized there were data and plots a much bigger graph than we require. So the first thing is we want to cut off this right hand bit here. So we go to, perhaps before we do that, we find in which row is our last observation. So we just go in the table and press end and then down arrow to get to the bottom. It's in row 716. So now we go into the graph, right mouse click, go to select data. And up here you can see the entire data area and it goes to 1657 when really the last observation is in 716. So we just change that manually and we are all good. Perhaps once we're in the select data uh, category, we can also add the years uh, here, so we press shift and hold it down, then press enter and down arrow. And the first column is selected, and here we have the year, so that's fine. Now we just need to take care of uh, being able to see variation in both series. There are two ways how you can do that. It would be standardized both series. Uh, and then we can plot them on the same scale, standardizing meaning we change them to have zero mean and variance one, both of them. Or in Excel, there's an, uh, another very neat way actually of dealing with this. You just highlight one of them here because we can't really see the bottom one, the temperature anomalies. So click on it and you can see it's highlighted. Now, now right mouse click and then go to format data series. And you can immediately see what comes up is an option to create a secondary access. And that's what we do. And now we can actually see, move this. Now we can see both the series clearly. We can actually clearly see that both of them have a trend. One has a lot more variation, that's the temperature uh, anomalies, which have a lot of variation. The CO2 trend is, um, you know, pretty smooth. So we can already see just from looking at that graph that most likely there's quite a high correlation between the two series. But let's calculate a correlation coefficient. And for that, we use the function corel in Excel. Now what we need is two data arrays, uh, array one, array two. We just checked and figured out that the last observation is in row 716. So it's possibly easiest at this stage to just type in the two data arrays. The temperature anomalies are in C2 to C716 and the CO2 two concentration is in D2 to D716. We close the parenthesis and here is your result, 0.8435. Now, for those of you who know what correlation coefficients do, they go from negative one for perfect negative correlation to positive one for perfect positive correlation. This is a pretty strong correlation, but caution, is at hand. Both of these series exhibit a trend. And if you have two trending series, you're bound to get a high correlation coefficient. This reminds us that correlation is absolutely not the same as causation. Although in this particular example, as we, or at least some people understand the chemistry, there's actually good reason to believe that there is a causal relationship from CO2 concentration to temperatures, global temperatures. But we leave it with this.